Your votes are in. They have all been counted. Yes, it's the big one. Who's going to win the BBC RHS People's Choice Award 2021? We cannot wait to find out who you, the great British public, have chosen. Oh, it's so exciting. It's just like election night, Sophie. <laughs> Welcome back to the Chelsea Flower Show. This week really has exceeded all expectations. I just think people have been so happy to be here again. Yeah, but loads of people sort of mingling together. We're not used to it, are we? Some people are a bit apprehensive, but once you get here, it's got that festival vibe about it. It's wonderful. And also, it's been really different. Having a Chelsea Flower Show in September, a lot of people have been saying, wonderful to see just a different palette of flowers, different colours. Yeah, and what you can do in your garden at this time of year to make it really interesting. I found it, you know, really stimulating as far as the plant palette is concerned. Mm. Wonderful. And we have to talk about Come on. the weather. The blue sky, we have been so lucky. I think we're set to have possibly one of the warmest Septembers ever on record. Now, you couldn't have planned that, could you? No, it's all come together <laughs> nicely, hasn't it, Sophie? Well, it really has felt like a happy place to be. And tonight, we're celebrating everything we love about the RHS Chelsea Flower Show, an event supported by M&G. JJ Chalmers brings his commentary skills to horticulture as he takes us through the runners and riders vying for the title of RHS Plant of the Year. I'll be talking all things roses with Silent Witness star Amelia Fox, as well as discovering how she transformed a bleak concrete space into a fragrant cottage garden. And of course, as we've already said, tonight's the night we get to announce the winner of the BBC RHS People's Choice Award, your favourite large show garden of 2021. Now, though, if you're seeking some inspiration to revamp your garden in time for spring, Arit Anderson's been paying attention. This is her guide to the top trends that have emerged from this year's Chelsea Gardens. My first trend for Chelsea 2021 has to be the use of natural materials. Here on the Florence Nightingale Garden, I love how they've used this cross-laminated timber that have given it a really architectural feel in this wonderful structure. But timber's all over the show. On the Yo Valley Garden in the wonderful egg. And on the Boodle Secret Garden, I really like how they've used the wany edge end of a board. That means you can really see the texture of the timber. And even on the Garden of Hope, I really wanted to make sure we had steam bent timber because it gives curvaceousness and it's got a very tactile feel to it. But it's not just timber where we're seeing these natural materials. It's also all across the paving within the gardens. Clay pavers, they're a great addition to any garden. So here they're quite dark and moody, and on the Arcadia balcony garden, a more buttery colour. But also, I've enjoyed seeing pavers as in natural big slabs of stone on the M&G garden. Wonderful use of stone there. In my opinion, the best thing about using these natural materials is that they get better and better with age. This year's Chelsea has pushed us to look beyond the flower. And that takes me to the second of my trends, it's all about edibles. Across the showground, I've enjoyed seeing fruits, vegetables, but more importantly, when it's mixed in a border. So like here, we've got sangasorbas and rebeccias and grasses and salvias, but mixed in, there's beetroot, there's kale, and there's cabbages. By incorporating this style of planting into our borders, it prolongs the season, it makes it look good, it feeds us and nurtures the soul. Yeah. 
and my last trend in Chelsea 2021, last but no means least, is the house plant. And although it's celebrated in the Great Pavilion, I love the fact that it's escaped into the showground, into its very own category, and has been awarded medals. So why is that? Well, it's down to the fact that we've had to spend so much time indoors over the last 18 months. And by looking after these plants, we can see the benefits that they've given us, not only for our mental well-being, but improving the air quality in our homes. And you don't have to have a garden to enjoy these plants. I hope that this is going to be a trend that continues for many years to come. Thanks, Harriet. Some inspiration there to keep us all busy over the winter months ahead. And now for a flower that comes into its own at this time of year. Rachel's been here in the Grey Pavilion finding out how chrysanthemums are enjoying their moment in the sun. And some may say it's long overdue. I'm with you, Joe. It's wonderful that we've got an early autumn show where we can really savour these chrysanthemums. They've been in cultivation for something like 3,000 years and they originate in China and became extremely popular in Japan where the royal gardeners used to closely guard all their horticultural secrets and in fact it became the national flower of Japan in about 1910. I'm now pleased to say that we are growing them all over the world which means that we can enjoy flowers like these. We were very fortunate to come and visit you for our preview programme, yeah. saw all of those wonderful golden chrysanthemums and lots of them here on the display. Has it all gone smoothly? Absolutely, yeah. We were delighted to bring um, a lot of good quality blooms um, down, so no, we've been very happy with the result. And to match the golden flowers, a gold medal? Yes, our tenth one at Chelsea, so we were very pleased with that. Could you talk me through some of the different types that you've got? There's in-curves, which make a real tight ball. There's the intermediates, like the Misty series, which are still curl in, but a little bit looser, a little bit more open petaled. I do see a lovely spider there, a green flower. And green flowers seem to be incredibly popular. How easy are they to grow? They're as easy to grow as any other chrysanthemum, but because they are late flowering, they're not truly a garden plant unless you've got a really sheltered spot. Now, I grow at home mostly spray chrysanthemums. Yeah. I find they get incredibly tall. Spray chrysanthemums are certainly the easiest to grow. Uh, there's really very little work in them at all. Somewhere with good drainage, but a nice rich soil, plenty of water. Well, I can see a few there that I'm going to have to maybe take home with me later. Thank you. Thank you. I've come over to the National Chrysanthemum Society's display to see some reflex type chrysanthemums. Now these, you can't miss them, they're right in the middle. Absolutely huge, almost ball-like flowers. Now they come in this wide range of colours. You get this size of flower because they're dispods, which means that when they were younger, removing any of the sort of side shoots, the other little buds that are developing, just allowing the main flower to develop. And you might end up with perhaps three big flowers on a single plant. I don't grow them at the moment, but I'm determined to give it a go. Because if there are more beautiful blooms here at Chelsea, I've yet to see them. There are certain plants, aren't there, which conjure up some kind of memory. Things your parents used to grow or perhaps your grandparents had in their borders. Sophie, have you got strong gardening memories from childhood? Well, all my, all my, my parents, my grandparents, they've all, they're all gardeners. And uh, that, that just reminds me of my parents' garden. They've been in a house for almost 50 years. They have these incredible walls of you, which have been there sort of 40 plus years. Got, well, like a maze you can get lost in. Yeah, absolutely, the sort of rooms. It's yeah, very clever. Great. Well, sweet peas and roses, scented. You know, my grandma Lily used to take me out in the garden and she used to prune them, or to, well, just pick 
them and bring them into the house for the vase, and I'd always help her. Very, very special memory. It's, well, grandparents and gardening, it is special, isn't it? I'm on both sets of my grandparents, they garden. My grandmother had this wonderful garden of roses, and my other grandparents in Nottinghamshire had an old mill, which was wonderful riverways and tunnels and a pond and it was all beautifully planted wow. up. We used to go in a little, little boat through tunnels. It was a fairy tale. It was. It was a lovely, lovely childhood. Yeah, well, my grandfather on the other side, he, he, he literally gardened in a waistcoat like Percy Thrower. He had island beds and he had sort of heathers over there and then a perfectly flat lawn as well. And I remember helping him out occasionally while well, raking up leaves and stuff like Did that. Did he have the hat then? No, he didn't need a hat. He, he was very swarthy. He had a good, good, good head of hair. Oh, if you could see you now, Joe. Well, away from the hustle and bustle of Main Avenue and the Great Pavilion, visitors have been falling in love once again with the artisan gardens. Here's the story behind one of them, the Blue Diamond Forge. I'm James Nuttall. I'm part of the Blue Diamond Garden Centre design team. We are creating the Old Forge Garden at Chelsea Flower Show, which is based on the Old Forge, which is situated here in Branscombe in South Devon. So due to COVID, I haven't been able to visit the site before. I'm hoping when we visit the Old Forge, it will bring it so much more to life than we've seen in the pictures. There should be some atmosphere and some detail and some inspiration that we can get from it. Wow, what a building. This is going to be uh, a real challenge to build and reconstruct. We've got this incredible thatched roof, but such a huge slope. So that's something we're going to have to try and create. So that's going to be a real challenge. And then also finding a way to weather the thatch so it doesn't look as though it's just been built a week ago, which in reality it will, will have been. Even the wood and the timbers, the age within that, you can see it's got woodworm in there. It tells us its own story. You've got to look at everything and you've got to try and recreate it as close as possible, find exactly the right materials with the right history, the right age behind it, uh, and then try and pull all that together. You can see the ivy growing up there, the wall and how it's entwined into the roof. So that's something we want to bring to the garden. With the building, it's, we obviously can't recreate a full working forge within the space we have at Chelsea. So we have to do it in a way that doesn't miniaturise the exact copy. So it is an interpretation of this, this building. Uh, and we're trying to make sure we maintain those key features of the forge, make sure those are visible to people viewing the garden. And then with a bit of sort of cleverness, we can create the scale of a bigger building within the space we have. I'm here to meet Simon Hall, who's the third generation blacksmith at the Forge. We commissioned him to create a couple of pieces for the garden, and this is also to show that blacksmiths and artists take a lot of inspiration from nature and what they see around them. So we've, I'm excited to see what he's come up with. Hi, Simon. Hey James, how are you? Hi, nice to meet you at last. And you, and you. <laughs> do I have a quick look at what we're uh, doing Yes, here? I'm really excited to yep. see what you've done. So what we're doing, leaves are made, and we're just slowly shaping them to follow the lines, and then what we'll do, we'll cut them to length, and then weld them all on. Looks really good. Thank you. I like the way you've got all the different thicknesses of the, the stems. Yeah. Different sizes and shapes of the leaves. Yeah, just trying to make it look as natural as possible. That's the idea, yeah. I think that's going to work really, really well in the garden. So we've got to try and get everything from the, the look of the wood, the, the sort of the soot and all that yeah. work that's been ingrained over that's hundreds it, yeah. of years. Yeah. And same with the brickwork on the inside, you can just see it's been used, this forge has been working for <laughs> hundreds of years. Yeah. And, um, and then it's just the vast array of all the, you know, all the tools that you've got in here. Yeah. For the gardening and the planting schemes, we want to try and use the colours that you would see within a forge, so the, the rich red colours, the oranges, the vibrant yellows, the colour of the soot, the sort of dark foliage plants, so we're trying to combine that all together to create a sort of a mirror image of the inside of the forge in the outside garden, so when you view the garden from the outside and 
look upon it, you'll see those rich colours. You've seen this garden in pictures and we've seen it on the internet and we've seen a few films of it, but nothing gives you the, the scale and the location like visiting. So you can pick up on all the subtle details, the flint in the wall, the old rusty nails in the beams, the ivy creeping up the side of the building. So there's plenty we're gonna take away, uh, plenty to work on, lots of things we've gotta try and get right. And um, so it's gonna be a challenge, but it's an exciting one. Well, look at this. James did it. He brought the forge at Branscombe right here to Chelsea. It's fully functional. The forge blasting out heat. There was even a blacksmith working away here the other day. And the attention to detail is it's amazing. It's incredible. Three weeks they get to build this. It feels as if it's been for here for hundreds of years. It's so authentic, isn't it? You know, we've got the, the, the quenching bowl over there. We've got tools here. We've got the anvil behind me. You can really imagine someone working away in here. And that's what James was worrying about, the, the attention to detail, the, making the thatch look like it had been here for hundreds of years. And you look up in the rafters there, it is just absolutely stunning. Brilliant. And as you say, I mean, people don't understand how quickly they have built this. It's weeks, and before that, it was just turf here. Yeah, you've got to build it and age it. It's incredible. Let's, Let's have a look at the garden. Well, the first thing you see, I mean, you know, this thatch roof. It's so clever, isn't it? It's brilliant. I mean, that's a new thatch roof, but they've, they've put mud on it and moss on it and raked it down and aged it, and that looks like it's been there for decades as well. It really does. It's the attention to detail, which is exactly what James was talking about. Yeah. That's what he wanted to achieve. And the garden itself, beautiful, full of colour. Lovely spicy Lovely. colours for this time of year. Yes, things like the Helleniums and the Crocosmias and, you know, and Persicarias. And, it, and it's really good planting. It's a little bit stuffed, a little bit. You know, there's not a lot of room for them to breathe, but um, there's some great trees in here. The idea is that the woodland, we're right on the edge of the woodland. You get that sense, don't you? Do. you? Nice place to work. Yeah. The public have definitely loved it. They've come here in their droves. They've really appreciated the garden. The judges, though, they gave it silver, and it was quite complicated why they did that, wasn't it? Well, it's all about you, you give a brief, and then you have to hit the brief, and the more complicated your brief, you know, you can lose points here and lose points there, and also this year, it's harder to get a silver, silver gilt and gold, so they made it a bit trickier. So, so an example, I mean, something that will have lost some points, is a branch, quite simply. A single branch. A single branch, because you explain why. Well, because the smithy is meant to be, get, be able to get to the pool of water <laughs> On a regular basis to fill up his bucket and come back in and, and that's not practical yeah. he would have taken that off with a set of pruners also the building they, the judges felt was slightly out of proportion to the garden as a whole it's a little bit dominant and i can see that and then the stream at the bottom as well yeah the stream it's just a little bit narrow and not quite meandering and naturalistic enough perhaps you know on that side so it really is nitpicking but listen you know they got best artisan garden here Everyone here absolutely loves this garden, and so do I. And so do I. Well, Chelsea is all about horticultural excellence, of course, and nowhere is that better illustrated than the prestigious RHS Plant of the Year competition. Previous winners have gone on to become household names, like the runaway bride hydrangea in 2018. Remember her? So who better to take us through the runners and riders than athlete and pundit JJ Chalmers? You could say that the Plant of the Year Award is something that the exhibitors here in the Great Pavilion have been training for their entire lives. This is the Olympics of the horticultural world. Now, RHS Plant Committee Manager Jill Otway is here to tell us a bit more about the competition. I guess my first question is, what is this competition? What is the Plant of the Year? The Plant of the Year competition, JJ, is to celebrate the new plants that are launched by our exhibitors in, here in the Great Pavilion every year. How do you judge one plant against another? There are three main criteria. They're looking for the innovation in that plant, so advances in breeding and uh, an improvement on what has gone before. They're looking for excellence and impact in that plant and they're looking for the likely public appeal. Will you and I want to buy it? How hard is it to crown a champion? I always liken it to Crufts. Supreme champion at Crufts could be a judgment between a, a Chihuahua and a Greyhound, but the judge is no good dog and the same with my plant committees, they know a good plant when they see it. Right, let's take a look at some of the runners and riders, 18 plants in total. Let's check out some of the favourites. 
This jacaranda would have been covered in beautiful blue flowers if Chelsea had gone ahead earlier in the year. But even just with these leaves, it's an absolutely stunning plant. Well, I told you earlier in the week I love a climber, but I've never seen a sweet pea like this before. In fact, it's three times as sweet as any I've seen before with these stunning lavender and burgundy petals. Even the humble kale has a shot at the crown. This, the rainbow candy crush. Not to mention, you could eat that. Sadly, these entrants fell at the final hurdle and failed to make it onto the podium. But let's take a look at the beauties that beat off tough competition and made it into the final three. So in third place, Symponium Sienna, a hardy but vibrant succulent. Insect-friendly Allium Lavender Bubbles secured second place, but there can only be one winner. Circus Eternal Flame, displaying autumnal colours throughout the year and taking the crown. Ladies and gentlemen, your plant of the year. Well, I'm delighted to say I'm joined by John Wheatley and Peter Freeman, the men responsible for growing this absolute beauty. John, how does it feel to, to win this accolade? Oh, it's the greatest honour ever. This is the second time in two Chelsea's. And to come here for an autumn Chelsea and come with such a magnificent plant is fabulous. Peter, I'd love to know, you know what makes this a champion. What really won the competition for this plant was the foliage, which moves from bright, vivid red to orange and then through to yellow. And it's totally hardy. Well, thank you, guys. And, and congratulations again on, on such an incredible achievement. Thank you. Thank you. Well, time now to welcome an actor well known to all of us, a silent witness pathologist, Dr. Nikki Alexander. It is, of course, the one and only Amelia Fox. <laughs> welcome to Chelsea. I mean, you're absolutely no stranger to Chelsea at all. I've seen you year after year. Well, I love it. It's the best flower show in the world, I think. And it's such a treat being here and being with lots of people, which feels so extraordinary, doesn't it? With these beautiful flowers in a very different time of year. The crowds here, actually, today, in particular are huge which is such a difference after the time we've just had but it's also it's it's funny being here in September isn't it it is and it's lovely to see well I, I mean there must have it must have pre presented so many different challenges for the gardeners um, creating at this time of year in September rather than in May and then just the different colors are so amazing and the different flowers and the inspiration for your own garden at home what stood out for you just walking around I've just, I've loved the sort of harvest feel of the reds and the yellows. The Rebecca seems to be absolutely everywhere. I'm definitely going to get that for my garden <laughs> right now <laughs> and take that home. And even just seeing these roses here, they're so glorious. And to try and, you know, I suppose keep the flowers going in the change of seasons rather than in spring when they're all emerging naturally anyway. It I is. mean, I'm. The scent of these roses oh. is quite something, and I think this is actually the only rose exhibit in the whole of the show this year, for obvious reasons. Um, I mean, I've come, I've taken a rose home every single year from Chelsea. My garden is stuffed with <laughs> Chelsea roses. But you, you've got a garden full of roses as well, haven't you? I do. Well, when I bought um, my first house, I, all I wanted was to have a garden, and the garden um, was like Fred Flintstone had been let loose in it. It was just rocks <laughs> and pieces of wood. And I really wanted, not being able to move into the countryside at that time, I wanted a bit of countryside in London. And it's a tiny garden, but I wanted all the flowers that I love, and those are cottage garden flowers. And of course, roses is a big theme um, of love and passion for me. My little girl is called Rose. My middle name is Rose. <laughs> I love roses, so roses I'm in everywhere. total heaven. This is the perfect place for you. Um, what did it mean to you having that garden during lockdown? Well, I felt enormously lucky to have um, some space to be outside in and, and wish that everyone could have a bit of outside space. I see that there are, you know, there's a celebration of even balcony spaces here and that we can all do a little bit to try and um, have a bit of nature in any space that we've got spare space. So I felt so lucky and I feel that the flower show reflects the sort of tribute that we owe you know, the people who've worked through the pandemic, the NHS garden, the Florence Nightingale garden, the nurses, the doctors, all the people who've been frontline, and I love that. There's a real feeling of hope here mm. today. There is, and also just about mixing cities 
with nature yeah. and medicinal plants, as you say. Yeah. And in, as far as gardening goes, are you the sort of person that, do you enjoy the actual gardening process or is it the, the end product and just enjoying <laughs> sitting there that you like most? I love the gardening process. If, if there is an end product, then I'm delighted. I would say that I'm a trial and error garden, uh, gardener. Um, I was brought up by my parents who are very uh, good gardeners, but um, they're all about wildflowers and uh, meadows and there isn't anything structured or formal so um, I think I've slightly inherited their love of the wild. Mm. Well after the, some of the storylines you cover in Silent Witness I can imagine you need to sort of kick back and <laughs> enjoy your, your roses and your garden. Definitely a sanctuary. <laughs> well Amelia it's lovely to see you here again at Chelsea. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. <laughs> Now, whether this is your first Chelsea or practically your second home, it is mine. There's always plenty to capture the imagination and tantalise the senses. Adam Frost has been out and about finding out what visitors and exhibitors have enjoyed in 2021, as well as uncovering some unexpected quirks. It's time for fun with Frosty. The Chelsea Flower Show is not just about the beauty and perfection. There's plenty of things that are a little bit weird and wonderful, and I am going to find some. Wow. So what do you think of that? So, we've got a giant horse made of a hedge jumping out of a flower pot. Make of that what you will. can't go wrong with the cuisine, but how many different things can you do with one flower? Wow. Hey, so I've got the buses. I'll get you, butler. All aboard. I'm in the middle of a Chelsea show garden, and I found an egg. I'll tell you what, though, it does look cool. So the idea is you can raise yourself up so you're looking over that wonderful meadow. Let's see what happens. But stop mate, you're going down. What? <laughs> you're, going, you're going to crash into the rock, crack the egg. I thought it was easy. <laughs> but actually, hey, right, this is Tom everybody, right? He designed this garden. We wanted to do something that's just a bit fun, a bit, bit, bit playful, and just do something that you have to work for your lunch. Don't you love how a Chelsea designer's mind works? So let's go. This is hard work. Look at that below there, look. You can see the stream, it is working. The stream is starting to reveal itself. That view over the meadow is superb. Come on in, you beautiful people. Come on in. So how does it feel to be back after the break that we've had? Um, it's oh. lovely. Favourite thing you've seen so far? Salvias and... Noreen's? The Noreen's. Yeah. What's it like to be back after having <sighs> the break that we've all had? It's just wonderful, yes. Oh. But gardening saved me during the pandemic, you know. Your favourite thing you've seen so far? Uh, Salvia Amistad, I love it. You were meant to say, me? <laughs> What's your favourite thing you've seen so far? I think it's definitely the balcony garden. If you could take one thing home, what would it be? We have. We've taken a lot oh, of plants. We've taken loads of seeds, loads of alliums, loads of bulbs, rhizomes. We'll see if we can keep them alive. We're really disappointed that we didn't get to talk to Monty earlier. Why would you want to talk to Monty <laughs> when you've got me? Now the moment is finally here. It's time to reveal your winner of the BBC RHS People's Choice Award, the show garden that you have chosen as your favourite. And this is the winning garden, but designer Tom Massey has absolutely no idea that he's won your vote. And I'm here with RHS Director of Gardens and Shows, Helena Pettit, and we're off to surprise him. Go on, Helena, you better go first. Seed pods mm. by um, Organic Shape, so it's the kind of thing that we just thought this shape really referenced that whole organic message. Mm. This isn't actually about seeds. Tom. At all. <laughs> <laughs> Good 
congratulations. <laughs> On behalf of the BBC and the RHS, you are the People's Choice Award winner for Chelsea Flower Show 2021. <laughs> 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 Very nice. It's so great that this is this is the first organic garden at Chelsea, the first garden approved by the Soil Association, and it's just such a good message that the people have voted for a garden that is all about sustainability. It's you know it's such an important message. It's such an important thing to be talking about, and the fact that the people have voted for it is just such a such a good testament to that whole message. Yeah. They really connected with, with the story behind it, and you've just shown how beautiful a garden can be and be organic and that's one of the key points you're trying to get across here. I think that's what we were talking about wasn't it that people think of organic as scruffy or food production or just kind of being about you know not necessarily being about a beautiful space but I hope this garden really does demonstrate that organic is it's, it's an ethos and a set of principles and anyone can do things organic. You know. Do you think you had any chance of winning that? Um, <laughs> I don't know you never know who the people are going to vote for but You've uh, had a great reaction to the garden, haven't we, you? We've had, I mean, you can see the people yeah. around now. It's had a really good reaction, and it's, um, it's just been such a good show, and I've loved doing the September. I think we embraced autumn as well, so I think that helps. Well, that we've got well done. Panel. Tom Massey, People's Choice. Well done. <laughs> well, Joe and Monty will be chatting with Tom over on BBC Two in half an hour. But huge congratulations to him and to all the designers, growers and exhibitors this week. Showing at Chelsea is always an incredible achievement. But this year, it's been even more of a triumph. It certainly has. Join us on BBC Two at 8.30pm with more horticultural heroics and one of Scotland's greatest musical exports, Charlene Spiteri, lead singer of Texas, will be giving us an exclusive tour of the wildlife haven she's creating in rural North Wales. And Joe and I will be back on Sunday night at 6pm on BBC One with our highlights from the show. But for now, goodbye. Goodbye. Whee!